Welcome to Stitchery Stories, where textile artists share their life in fabric and thread. Inspiration, techniques, disasters and delights. And I'm Susan Reeks, enthusiastic embroiderer and textile arts dabbler who also loves podcasting. So take a break and enjoy our light-hearted chat and please share with your friends so they can enjoy it too. Creating an online course that your students can access whenever they want truly is a magical business asset. Create it once and sell it over and over. I cut out your learning curve so you can build and launch your online course faster and easier and make money from it sooner. You can get started for free today. Sign up for your crafty online course creators workbox. It includes a route map to show you what needs doing, a sensible techie guide so you know what to use and a checklist so you don't forget anything. Plus, you'll receive the fortnightly crafty course chat where I share resources and information around online course creation. And of course, I'm always cheering you on. You can sign up for your crafty online course creators workbox there's a blog post on stitcherystories.com that tells you more about it as well and if you follow me on instagram then susan.l.weeks there's a link in bio there and also you can sign up on my facebook page at the missing training so let's dive into this week's episode hello and welcome today to our lovely guest vendulka bate hi vendulka Hello, Susan. It's lovely to speak to you today, and I'm uh, really excited to uh, dig into your story, Vendulka. Yeah, lovely to be here. Yeah, it's really great. Uh, I'll just go through Vendulka's bio and stuff like that, and then we'll we'll dig in, and then we'll find out all about Vendulka. Right, so Vendulka is a textile artist, quilter, embroiderer, and designer, and she started making clothes with her mum and learned patchwork when she moved to the UK from her native Czech Republic. Her passion for fabric and teaching led her to open a shop with her now husband called, well, (laughs) her husband's called Olivier, (laughs) and their (laughs) shop is called Oliven, which is a combination of their names, Olivier and Vandulka. They started on the Isle of Wight and six years ago relocated to lovely Suffolk. Her creative journey started with squares and triangles and lots of free motion quilting and over the years has moved and evolved towards textile art and including machine and hand embroidery. Vendulka has published a book on cathedral windows, the patchwork style, not the building, and her work has won several awards in international quilt shows. You can find all of Vendulka's links on her episode of Stitchery Stories, and she can you can find her everywhere basically. She's got websites, Facebook, and Instagram. Right, welcome again, Vendulka. It's lovely to see you. Thank you. <laughs> right then, so if you want to get us started, uh, Vendulka, and would you like to share with us what you're working on at the moment and what's got you excited? I should imagine getting your shop open again is so <laughs> quite exciting. Well, that is that is true. Mind you, it was actually really nice, this sort of easy lifestyle being at home. So um, I was a little bit debating, do I have to open it? <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, it's lovely to be back. And um, well, exactly, because we've only just came out of lockdown. Yeah. Uh, what I've been actually working on is I started to record uh, some of my classes as a video courses because, you know, lots of people throughout all these restrictions we had, uh, they jumped into Zoom lessons and all these kind of things. And I had two kids at home. I had enough Zooms with them and school. Yeah. And I didn't really want to spend more time on the Zoom. And I was, over the last several years, I was always dreaming that one day I would like to record my classes. But there was just never the time because yeah. it does take time learning a new new skill. It, it is, isn't it? You know, It, it the, is, yeah. yeah. Knowing to record the, the editing, um, 
and all these all these kind of things and uh, so if you don't have any any guidance it's it's good to at least have a lot of time to be able to do the trial and error yeah. so uh it's it's said that you've only started your courses about how to create an online course now because yeah. i would have appreciated it about a half a year ago <laughs> <laughs> I know it's uh, it's taken me a while because I had various other commitments as well to be able to actually start and kind of work out what it was people actually needed. But uh, we'll, we'll we'll come on to that. So whilst you've had your shop, you've been running in person classes as as well. Then obviously, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. and right. I've been um, traveling around countries, sort of teaching different uh, different quilting groups and uh, teaching at shows and things like that. And um, obviously, when all this stopped, um, I had to pivot and, you know, see, okay, what else can we do? And the good thing about, um, you know, recording the classes is that it's a future income, Mm -hmm. uh, whereas the Zooms are just that sort of income on that day, but you can't repeat it. Whereas these classes which I've recorded, I can now be selling them for the next 10, 15 years. Yeah, and that's that's something I'm, I'm glad you've raised that point because the benefit of investing that time in creating the classes and it is an upfront, there is a learning curve, there is an yep. upfront amount of time and effort and yeah, in money as well, depending on what you need to kind of buy and have. But it, it's it's an investment in your business. And you're so right that doing the kind of online classes in terms of a workshop and just t- turning up and doing something on Zoom is it is repeatable you have to repeat it each time to to earn earn that money haven't you and so that's Mm -hmm. just the equivalent of going traveling around the country doing those daily classes which yes yes, it's lovely to have that in-person element but so many people say to me yeah but you know the traveling's a pain it's expensive and you can't go very far away because then you've got to have accommodation and then people say it's too expensive and all of those things so having it as a pre-recorded on-demand videos just mm-hmm. means that, as you say, that you can now sell those, market those forever, you know, for, for, yeah. for a long time, especially for things like patchwork or quilting or sewing. Things evolve, but the basics are the same. You know, yes. it's, it's not really going to go out of date, as it were. So, yeah, I think that's a really good that you had that opportunity or you took you took the opportunity to, to do that so do that. You, yeah so you must have quite a, a catalogue of courses now have you well I think that I still have got more of those which aren't recorded than mm-hmm. those which are recorded yeah but it is growing and obviously um as you the more you do it uh the more efficient you get yes and and it's e- easier easier it gets so now I can um now I can just uh, kind of set it all up uh, after my in-person teaching, stay an extra, you know, two hours in the shop and uh, and just and just do my recording. So it's it, it obviously is so much, so much easier now than it was, you know, at the, the, the first one. I remember that just took me, it just yeah. felt like it's taking me forever. The first one you know? always does take forever. Yeah, feels yeah. like it anyway. And then, you know, now it's like, yeah, oh, I, I I know exactly what I'm doing and da da da. It's it, it it gets so much easier. Yeah. So I really I really would recommend it to people. And also another thing is that, you know, we are we are set in in our ways, like people going to a in person classes, and they would never thought about doing doing an online course somewhere, you know, with, yeah. with somebody from America, let's say, or with somebody from Australia. But um we were forced now to do it because if we wanted to keep going over all these lockdowns and all these restrictions we 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 that that was the only thing how we could learn something new and how we could uh, in a way meet some people um so or or have a contact with somebody else so people realized that it's actually okay, you know. Even those on a receiving side, even the, those those learning from from these classes, they actually realize, oh, actually, it's okay, you know. <laughs> and and they they realize the benefits that they don't need to pack up everything and yes. put it all in the car and then forget half of the stuff and only realize once you arrive at your destination, you know. <laughs> and they can just go, oh yeah, I can use this and I can use that and just go into the drawer and get it. So. I'm sure that that these things are here to stay. Mm. 
Of yes. course, people will be going back to in-person classes, but um, I think that all this online stuff is here to stay, and and all these has opened up a lot of a uh, lot of people's eyes in a way, or a lot of people's minds. That yeah, it's it's okay, it's fine, and it it can be fun. Yeah, it really has, and and I think it's given more opportunity to for, for people who previously have struggled to join in with things because of mobility issues or illness or lack of transport or, or you know n- name name the other reasons why it's been difficult for some people to attend in person classes and so now they you know there's there's been a, a broader broader level of opportunity for people as well so yeah I think I read something last year that in six months society had made like a five-year leap in 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 the adoption of technology last year so yeah yeah. I can imagine yeah yeah yeah. so good on you good on you for uh, investing that time and effort in into that as well and uh, yeah I'm I'm sorry I wasn't ready to help you at that time there's been a few (laughs) to be honest there's been a few people who've um you know kind of needed help last year and I wasn't ready to I wasn't able to provide it in a structured way because I had other commitments that I you know I was timetabled in to do so but anyway yeah. that's anybody you know, that's coming soon is my online course to help you create an online course is actually properly launching at the end of the month so anyway enough <laughs> you know enough about online courses um <laughs> tell me a bit about your shop then Vendulka what what's going on in, in your shop it's obviously an intrinsic part of your 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 art and the things that you like to do yes so the shop is is really nice because I I must admit when I'm when I was sort of speaking with people um I in a way I don't really have my heart in the actual running of the shop and choosing the fabric and things like that it that is not the part of my of my work which brings the most pleasure but it supports all the rest because yeah. my biggest pleasure comes from actually teaching and and helping people achieve what they like to do and what they you know are are interested in but but obviously it goes hand by hand you know if i'm if i'm if i'm teaching and they've got the supplies there then it's sort of obviously easier yeah, and yeah. Uh, and also for my creativity is is also lovely when you are looking for the right shade of the fabric and you just go in w- w- walk upstairs into the room <laughs> and can choose from all the bolts and things like that so that is that is really nice and we now because i've started to do more and more um embroideries obviously this this whole lockdown just just led to to sit yeah. down and enjoy some hand hand work yeah so i started to do more more of that and we started to now stock um some hand embroidery threads as well perlace and stranded and things so so it's it's just uh yeah when 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 it arrived i just thought hmm so one of each goes into my stash and all yeah. the rest is for the customers <laughs> Ah, uh, the secret's out now, really. It's just your private shop, isn't it? That you occasionally open yep. up to let everybody else share it. <laughs> yes, kind of. <laughs> oh, brilliant. And so you've been you've been teaching. So is it mostly quilting and patchwork? You obviously you've got a. It, there's a lot of overlap now, isn't there, between all of all of the kind of fabric arts? Let's call them that. Exactly. Yes, and this is it. You know, I. Um, as in my bio, it says that I started with square, squares and triangles. So, you know, I started with the traditional patchwork of, you know, pe- piecing the piecing the quilts and um, and actually through uh, f- I, I really fell in love with free motion quilting. And uh, I made hundreds of quilts and all this free motion quilting, which I which I've made on them, gave me the the skill which now I can use in more sort of in a different, more creative way, Mm -hmm. Um, like, for example, machine embroidery, and then combine it with hand embroidery and use it more in a in a way of textile art. I mean, what I do these days, if I if I just do something for a pleasure, I literally just take a piece of piece of fabric um uh, quilt some nice design on the on all, all, all over all over the fabric yeah. and then I just start adding other fabrics but I start adding them by hand and you know stitching through them with some running stage 
adding some you know embroidery so it's 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 very different and for me i i really like this bridge of you know bringing the bringing the embroidery into the life of a quilters and 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 vice versa yeah and that was something that um was very apparent when i was speaking with lorraine turner um in a couple of couple of weeks ago very much you know she's like what what technique do I need to show to bring together and create a horse or a tiger or with all these different lovely fabrics and hand embellishments and stitching? And so, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's really nice. It's really nice to see, definitely. And now I've seen quite a lot of your designs as well. I know you've got a little project on the go as well, because I'm kind of involved with it. So shall we just yeah. share, shall we share where that's going? And then we can, uh, then we can move on to um, a bit more about your backstory as it were. Yes. Yeah, so, so yeah, the sort of um, following from, from this sort of creating all these online things, I wanted to um, share them online as well and promote them on social medias and things like that. And, what I what I started to experience there is that uh, quite a few of these textile or, or quilting groups uh, they very often um, don't allow self promotion. Mm. I understand that you know yeah, yeah. they don't want people you know coming and flooding it with 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 their stuff, but it also means that sometimes you know you you share you share your work and people are like oh oh where can I learn that where is this a pattern and things like that and you can't tell them. Mm, yes, that's that is frustrating, isn't it? It is really frustrating. Yeah. yeah. So so and we we were kind of you know talking about about this that 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 you know there is there is um you know so, so something like this it something like this is a little bit sort of missing from that. So we started together this uh, Facebook uh, uh, Facebook group called Buy Sell Patchwork and Embroidery Patterns, and uh, what we are trying to kind of achieve with that is that it's a place where the designers like me and like so many of of the guests on your on your on your podcast can uh, can share their creations and and if people come and ask then we welcome that they can you know share oh yes you can buy it there and there and and here and here because you know i just i just felt like I'm a bad guy for trying to make money from from something, and the thing is that I'm not making millions. You know, it's it's not like I'm promoting something. It, it's it's just bringing food on the table. That's all it is. You know, yeah. so um, so and I really felt felt sort of bad about you know f- being like this the sort of bad guy because everything free. Oh yes, you can share everything for free, but don't you dare charging for things and promoting it here. Mm. And I just feel like, oh, really? But you know, we're we're not the bad guys here, and and we put a lot of hard work into these patterns and into our designs, and so then not being able to 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 promote them and not being able to share them with people, it's um it's just a bit of a bit of a shame. So um, but but this group seems seems doing really fine, and people, this this is it. I I had lots of feedback from the customers from not the designers but from from the the actual people and they said oh we don't mind paying for things we're happy we understand that you know but it's all these people who run those groups they just you know because of a few who would abuse yeah. the self promotion they just stop it for everybody else which is which is a bit of a shame so yeah. so yeah we started with our own one and it's going it's going really well and um and yeah i just wanted to be a safe place for people to ask advice um and and also i wanted to be the bridge between the quilting and embroidery yeah and and so i mean it's you're spot on with it with everything you've said there and we'd got just you know we'd chatting i think we were chatting on instagram or you know how you do you start mm. talking to somebody or facebook wherever it was anyway so you know we've we've been chatting and just about all sorts of things really haven't we vendulka and uh, yes yeah we mentioned this and i think i'd been on a, on a rant about you know everybody wants everything for free as well and yes mm-hmm. yes we it's nice to experience how somebody does something and a taste of their work and style but ultimately yes we are 
not all charities and we do need to be able to as you say put food on the table pay the electric bill keep the internet going yes. um so yeah so we'd had this kind of quite interesting conversation anyway and so that's how this um this this group evolved so mm. there's quite a lot of quilting action in there it'd be nice to get some more embroiderers in there as well yes. so um yeah. so yeah. I'll, we'll i'll make sure that the link for the group is in this episode of Stitchery Stories as well. So we do welcome, and, and at the moment it's we haven't really got any rules. We may well put some in later, but we we do welcome people to come and share um, patterns and you know patterns really patterns for sale and related things. You know that is something that we really welcome. Yeah, well- we also welcome people to come and share that so if you know somebody wants to come and share their patterns we would also like them to share the group to their audience and then we can grow a a group there of 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 people who want to buy and make the patterns and ask questions and and the, the same group of people who also want to provide their patterns for sale as well so that's 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 the intention isn't it really and yes, it's yeah. just and that, as you say a nice people place we encourage people to ask questions about things and how do you do and where do you get and all those kind of questions as well but the main thing is if people want to take part then it can only grow and grow a, a big audience if everybody comes along and shares it so that's what we're really looking for isn't it Vendulka is for people mm, to yeah. to take part and share in equal in equal amounts really so yes. if you want to post something then you, would you also share the group to your audience is really what we're asking for I think that's fair mm-hmm. right so there's lots of exciting stuff going on there then um right now you've t- you've mentioned there about learning uh, dressmaking and learning patchwork when you um, came to the UK from the Czech Republic. So what kind of age was that then? Have you been in the UK a long time? Your English is absolutely excellent, I have to say. Thank you. <laughs> I came when I was 24. And, right. Um, I, when it comes to sort of dressmaking, I started around my sort of teenage years. So when I was when I was sort of um, let's say sort of ten, eleven, twelve, uh, and I would want my mom to make me something because my mom she used to be um, a milliner, so she used to Ooh. make he- uh, hats yeah. uh, in her in her youth. Then she worked for the railways, but uh, <laughs> the, the making the making of and obviously I grew up still during the communism, so there wasn't many shops, and she would always get some you know remnants fabric from somewhere. <laughs> And would make a nice, nice clothes for me. I've got two older sisters. One of them is actually a tailoress. So, so ah. the, the so, sewing and fabrics were yeah. always, you know, in our around around our house. And when I came to UK, I um, uh, started as a as a sort of au pair and waitress. But one of my uh, wonderful jobs, I worked for two years for this lovely couple. And I literally just walked their dogs and I cooked for them and I lived with them. And they had some other ladies who would come and and clean the house. So I had relatively a lot of uh, leisure time. Yeah. And uh, they had they had house in in Scotland and and one in Suffolk. And when I came to when I came with them to to Scotland, I stopped a car in a in a town called Bunkery in Aberdeenshire. Yes. Yeah. And and I looked out of the window and there were these stairs to the to the shop. And um on that um vertical side of the stairs there were written like fabrics and classes and haberdashery and, and all these kind of things. And for me it sounded like stairs to heaven. <laughs> you know, it was like oh, Fabulous. oh interesting. So I walked in and literally the following week was starting a beginner's patchwork class. Yeah. And and that was that. That was that was it. I was hooked. Um, I always admired whose uh, I always admired people whose uh, hobby became their way of living. Yes. And uh, so I was during during sort of this time of working for these people. I was kind of thinking, okay, so what is my hobby? What is it I like to do? So I did start it in millinery classes as well. I did start it um, upholstery classes. I did took piano lessons as well. <laughs> um, but it was the patchwork which kind of just just got me and I was absolutely hooked. And uh, and that was that. 
and and I started to make quilts for everybody around me, my mom, my yeah. my now husband's mom, and and my best friend, and <laughs> lots of people. And when we were sort of ready to 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 settle, our daughter was just about to turn one when we decided that we are gonna start uh, start our shop. Right. And honestly, I have no idea what was I thinking. <laughs> I had no idea what calico is. I had no idea that quilters guild or embroiderers guild exists, you know, <laughs> nothing. But uh luckily I I I'm one of the people who is not afraid to admit that I don't know something. Yeah. And and I was learning. I was improving my Im- uh, improving my English throughout this this whole course, you know, but yeah, my customers yeah. sort of correcting me. Oh, you say it like this and and, and <laughs> you say it like that. So that that helped as well. And uh, <clears throat> and I've learned a lot. And we are actually on the 16th of May. So I think that this episode, will, will, we're going to go just after that. But on the 16th yeah. of May this year, we're going to be celebrating 10 years since we've opened. Oh, fabulous. So it's been it's been a wonderful journey. And like I said, I, I started with these sort of squares and triangles. And, and we started the business on the Isle of Wight. And um, I had a wonderful friend there, uh, Sue Douglas, and uh, she was an embroiderer. And she taught me a lot and inspired me a lot in, you know, including a bit more embroidery and handwork into my, into my work. Right. But yeah. for several years, I only used it as a just for myself you know that that in in my own work I would I would use it and it's only now recently I got the confidence to actually teach the embroidery as well right right you know? yes yeah and so it really strikes me I and mean, that's just a fabulous story anyway of like get, getting started you're you're a real action taker aren't you Vendulka you you see that dream yeah. and you don't get bogged down in the all the hows it's just like right. This is what I want to do, and and I'm and I'm 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 going to go for it, which I think yeah. is just really fabulous. I, I love I love that story about the the, the stairway to heaven of uh, yes. <laughs> quilting yeah. and fabric, and how how inspiring you found that to say mm. right, that's it. This is what I want to do, even though at the time it wasn't something that you really knew anything or very much about. So. No, but the thing is. One of the, I don't know where did I hear that, but something would sort of uh, stayed in my head from maybe some books or some some speeches of somebody, uh, I don't know where, was the thing that when you want to start something, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just yep. have to start, yes. you know, and and this is this is what uh, uh, for for many people that I assume that that is what is stopping them from doing anything, you know, yeah. because yeah. they feel like, well, if, I, if I'm if i about to put my skin out there, it needs to be perfect. Mm. But actually, you know what? It doesn't have to be perfect. And, and it's okay to improve with time. When I look, when I listen to now, the first video course, which I recorded, I'm just um it's just making my hair stand on my hair <laughs> on my head <laughs> you know it's just oh it's just no it sounds terrible but uh, but but only with with time I gain a confidence and you know what we were watching um and this is this is a nice comparison over the lockdown we got into into baking with my with my kids yeah and we were watching the great british bake off yeah and i think that the first season we ever watched was um the one where nadia won i don't know if it was 11 or something or a quite quite sort of mm-hmm. advanced one yeah and over the lockdown we watched the first ever season and when i when I saw that, the judges, they were so stiff. They didn't make all these jokes. I think that's probably the only one that I watched was the very first one. I do remember watching the very first one. I'm not a great deal of, but I don't watch much telly and that's a long time ago now. But yeah, yeah, it's so funny how things evolve, isn't it? And exactly. And it's natural, you know. Yeah, And if we, if we 
always stopped ourselves from, you know, from sort of presenting anything unless it's absolutely perfect, then we would never get anything done. Nobody would ever start anything. Yeah, that's so true. Um, I was listening to somebody, uh, it was probably about a month ago now, and, and this person came out with the same kind of thing. It was basically try and start, and then you start to learn what it is that you need to know. And he said, then you stop dealing in theory and start dealing in reality. And I thought, Aww. yeah, that's absolutely that's perfect. Yeah, yeah, really, really hit the nail on the head with that one for sure. It is when you actually start, then you start to realise. Now, obviously, we can cut that learning curve down by getting some support and find, you know, yeah. stum- stumbling at, stumbling across the right sort of help from the right sort of person. But just m- making a start, then you discover what it is that you don't actually know. Because until you start, you don't know what you don't know yeah. either. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I would say then in terms of inspirations, then clearly your mum with her dressmaking and being able to magic fabric up out of the air, as you say, you know, mm-hmm. living in the communist era in Eastern Europe can't have been a whole uh, in a whole bowl of cherries either so that must have been very inspiring and by the fact that your sisters also carried carried on the kind of family tradition as well so that that must have been an inspiring start are there any other particular inspirations that you have Vendulka? well i'll tell you what what this era taught me and this is something what i'm it's it it might be a mindset because when I sometimes see people these days or, or some of my sort of customers or, or, or students, uh, when they, you know, they've got this luxury of, oh, I'll just buy three meters of this fabric and, and, and enough of this and, oh, just give me another half a meter so that I've got enough and things like that. Well, I didn't grow up with that. We went with my mom. I remember vividly going to this uh, fabric sale and it was literally remnants of cuts yeah Yeah. and my mom said oh I really like this fabric find me all the remnants of this fabric (sighs) and she magicked it up a wonderful dress out of it and and the reason why it was on sale is that in the print there were a pieces kind of missing you know where where the fabric fabric kind of creased yeah, and yeah. then the print didn't went through well the print color which didn't went through was black and i remember with the black marker covering all these marks <laughs> to make it look like like nothing happened you know <laughs> and and that's just what what it what that taught me is being creative and yes. thinking outside of the box you yeah, know and yeah. uh, so for me when um you know, some people. That's why maybe I'm 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 on the side of being able to create the pattern rather than just being the person who follows the pattern. Yes. I still can't do this with recipes. You know, I'm the <laughs> one who will follow the recipe to the dot. Whereas my husband, he just opens the fridge and you know cooks up something. I can do this with fabrics, but I can't <laughs> do it with food. <laughs> no, I'm hopeless at that as well. Definitely. So uh, yes, yeah, so that, that's that's really interesting. You, you you raised a good point there, and yeah, to be honest. When I was young, my my dad died when I was eight. My three younger brothers were younger than me. The youngest was only six months old. And so, you know, this was in 1973. And, um, you know, things were really hard for my mum. And it was the same kind of thing. We had to scratch around for for things and be creative. And I I used to watch um, Blue Peter. And I used to love watching the things they used to make on there. But I never had sticky back plastic or a special kind of glue or yeah. you know I, I was just like oh god where's the glue we haven't got any oh right uh, uh, you know what can I do and and so we finished up very much the same it's like well what have we got that I can fiddle about with or, or use use the idea and create it in a different way because rather than going oh I don't have this and I don't have that it was like well what what can I do and it is it does encourage your creativity that's that's for yeah. that's for certain it really really does hmm. so what about so you, your techniques have evolved then from triangles and squares um is there is there any one particular thing that you really love to do out of everything you know what what's your, your very favorite technique Mendelka? oh it has to be free motion quilting yeah slash 
embroidery because obviously the it does you do the same thing it's similar it's yeah. just the outcome which makes it quilting or or embroidery um because yeah it's um it's i must admit for me it's a form of meditation i just sit down behind the sewing machine drop the feed dogs and and i'm in a different world <sighs> you know Brilliant. it's it's just it's just lovely and uh, so so yeah for me that is uh that is the most sort of creative way mm. how i can express myself and uh yeah that is that is my favorite one fabulous and then what would you say out of all of this fascinating story has been your high point then have you got any high points to share with us vendulka well i i mean uh, you know publishing a book was 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 a good yeah, one and yeah. and w- w- winning winning few few awards was uh, was a nice one too but i think that what i really enjoyed and actually my husband as well it's um we couple years back we started to play with these um glittery and metallic paints on right. uh, which we sort of work on the fabric yeah and um we started with just making like a small mandalas and um and painting them so i i we in this case we work perfectly as a tandem as, as a perfect team so olivier usually draw the mandala on the on the back uh, on the backing yeah then i quilt it and then he or together we paint it Right. So, um, so I started with just small ones, uh, which uh, you know, having the having the sort of business hat on, they could be done as a kit and as a patterns, yeah. etc. But then we thought, oh well, we need to make one which which uh, on the shows I can have like behind me, like show to people, you know, what we can do. A big so statement a one- piece. Yes. Yeah. So we did one bigger one and it was like, oh, this is really good. And then my husband started to sort of design another one and another one. <laughs> and um, and then I spoken to uh, Grosvenor Shows, uh, which are uh, organisers of uh, like a quilting shows in, in Harrogate. And, and yeah, yeah the London. knitting and stitching show and the quilting. Yeah, the quilt show. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, some of these shows. And, um, and I said, oh, well, I... I I I can have for next year. I can have this body of work. We probably had four. I yeah. needed twelve. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and oh oh yes, we can do that. Yeah. So so I sort of organized that. We had a deadline, and um, and then well, sometimes I was working on these quilts in the evening, and um, and what would happen is we usually sort of when when we go upstairs from um, f- uh, when we go to bed. I sometimes, instead of switching the lights on and off and switching them on at the uh, downstairs and upstairs, I just I just put a torch on my phone and go upstairs. <laughs> yeah. And and I put the torch on, and I kind of accidentally went over this mandala which was sitting on the floor, which was uh, l- laying down on the floor, and and all the glitter paint in that in that <sighs> torch Ooh, light. Yeah. I was like, oh my god, look at this! This is amazing. It came alive. It came alive, exactly. Yeah. And we started to talk with my husband. Oh, wouldn't it be lovely if we could do this in, like, like you know, exhibit them in dark. And we managed to do this in one exhibition. Wow. It was two or three years ago in, um, there was a quilt, quilting, and they've got a lot of embroidery there, a quilt and stitch village in Utoxeter. Right. And because they've got it in a um, um race course, they've got oh, these yes, like a yes. smaller smaller yes. buildings. Yes. And we were able to black out the windows, close the door and just have spotlights on the on the quilts. Oh my god, it was fantastic. Wow. And I till today I regret that we didn't have visitors book because the comments oh. we were getting from the people it was absolutely amazing and they they loved it so that was I think definitely the highlight and I'd love to do it again hopefully fingers crossed one day at the festival of quilts um, yeah. which is you know the, the biggest sort of quilting yeah, show yeah. in the, in Europe so fingers crossed one day it might it might happen and i i provided you with a link so in the in the uh in the bio yeah. you can you can sort of see the link i've got just a short short youtube video it's obviously it's nothing uh, compared to seeing it in person but just to give you a glimpse how it looked 
Wow, that sounds absolutely fascinating. Really, really great. Yeah, yeah. An, an, an exhibition of quilts in the dark. Who'd have thought it? <laughs> exactly. You know, it was like, you know, that has, that's it's mental. Nobody, exactly. It's mental. <laughs> Nobody's ever done that. You know, we'll be definitely first. <laughs> so, yeah, we loved it. Uh, the other thing that strikes me is that your husband is actually involved in this. It's not, mm. he's, he's not just half of the name, he, he's, no. he is involved in the creation process as well which I think is fabulous yes yeah he started as a chocolatier and patissier and so he was expressing his creativity through chocolate and you know through things like that beautiful cakes so he just he just changed the medium now into textile and he's very good with with French knots maybe it might be something to do that he is French, French. originally <laughs> but uh, yes he is he and he's an incredible artist so so I'm I'm lucky that I can work with him and I love bouncing ideas off each other you know he always have got amazing like oh I think what if and I just go oh dear that that will mean <laughs> that will mean more work for me because it will be some amazing idea which I can't resist and I will have to do it <laughs> and, do it. <laughs> and, and yeah so he's got always good ideas yeah great and what about do you have any so that was a really great highlight have you got any um stories of something that didn't quite go well and if maybe a bit of a funny story to share with us you know what over the years as I was listening to your podcast (laughs) I have been always pondering over this question like if I was if I was asked this what would I say and I just can't come up with anything (laughs) and it's not that that things don't happen Yeah, yeah but I guess it's this creative you know mindset which I've got which makes it oh okay so so we can't do it like this okay what can we what can we do instead what can we how do? can we yeah, yeah. what can we do and it's like um when my husband was painting one of these mandalas uh, on one of them uh he had uh he was using actually brush and he accidentally dropped the brush onto the onto the mandala so oh. made a red mark on a light blue fabric no <laughs> and um and of course, it was like, what do you do? Well, you just make a new design and put more paint on the top more of it. More red on it, yeah. And more red on it and make it part of the design. And to be perfectly honest, nobody knows that that extra design, which is there all over, it's not just at that one place. It obviously then he had to add it all over yeah, because the yeah, mandalas yeah. are symmetrical. Yeah. Um, that that design wasn't originally intended to be there. <clears throat> yeah, and um, we've I've discussed this with people before and I've, I've said it, and, uh, and I heard you speak where well, we were chatting the other day and you said it the same, you know, there's no such thing as the embroidery police, the quilting police, the, yes. you know, the online marketing police. It's like nobody knows what it was in quotes supposed to be. Yes. What all anybody can see is the beautiful thing that you've created. So yeah, yeah it's so yeah, That's what so I always important. keep telling my students. Um, mm-hmm. I said to them, look, just because you see that amazing, uh, you know, art or, 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 or quilt or embroidery in a magazine or in an exhibition, uh, you just see the finished product yeah. and you don't have the designer standing next to pointing out, yeah, but I was supposed to do this here and, and, and this isn't really, this, this isn't, didn't really. This bit went wrong and I, yeah, and I cut that bit off and yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> And I, ju- I always say, you know, what happens in sewing room stays in sewing room. <laughs> and, and when somebody's admiring your work, just don't mention what went wrong or what you wanted to do. And just take a deep breath and say, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, such, such a very, very wise words there. So I think then, Vendulka, with all that wise advice and you know the excitement of everything kind of opening up again then do you want to just kind of finish off today and share with us any future projects ideas things that are coming along that we can all follow you and uh, you know see what's going on yes so it's actually it's actually quite interesting time because Mm. we've just celebrated 10 uh 10 years of of our business and uh, with all what's happening around the world, I feel that the whole 
teaching online and doing things online, it's definitely not going away. No. And I must admit, I'm actually really enjoying it. I really love the the freedom it gives us. And, uh, you know, with having two kids, I actually like the idea of being able to go away with them for a for a week and not having have to look for cover in the shop and things like that. So mm. I I actually don't know what 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 the future is is holding for us. I've got um, a book about long cushions up my sleeve, <laughs> which I would like to get um, get up and, and find the publisher for it. And um, I'm I'm really enjoying all these um, online classes, but at the same time, I am actually looking forward to starting uh, teaching in person as well. So um, I feel like like an open book and and a new new diary, you know, new new page in a diary uh, with sort of the next ten years of um, of my sort of creative journey. And I'm just I'm just looking forward what what the future what the future brings. So. Yeah. All I would say is just what's the expression? Um, I'll, I'll keep you. I'll keep you posted. I don't know. <laughs> just what, what, watch out. That's the one. Watch out. Watch I, this face. Watch this face. That's the one. Yeah, because I have. I have no idea. You know. So so let's see. Let's see what the future see, brings. Oh, well, first of all, well done for celebrating ten years of your shop being in existence. So that's that's a really great achievement, anyway. And yeah, I think. Everyone's been so focused on kind of like what the situation has been. It's been difficult to look forward. Mm. And I think you're not alone in being, let's call it in transition, perhaps, you know, taking stock of, of where you are and, you know, what's what you've enjoyed and what you've loved doing so far. And, you know, is it is it time to make a change and do something different? And I've, I've changed my focus of my business several mm-hmm. times over the years so yeah I think you're not alone in yeah. being in being in transition and yeah the honesty of well do you know what I don't really know let's go with it and see what happens I think it's brilliant exactly. anyway. Yes. I mean sometimes you just have to you just have to look at it like this you know and just see what the future brings because mm. As, like you said, you know, at the moment, everything is still so unsure and everything is still, you know, up in the air. And um, and, and yeah, you, you are right. I have discovered things that I, I like and, and I realized that uh, in the lockdowns, things I didn't miss. And um, and yeah, let's just kind of bring more of what I enjoy doing, which is which is teaching and yeah. creating sort of projects and um and and let's just bring more of that into into our lives yeah I think that's brilliant and it's things like I I haven't been paying a lot of attention it's things like festival of quilts is that is that on will we be able to see you anywhere or yes they're up in the air as well are they no, they are actually happening. Right. Um, or as 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 far yes. <laughs> as as far as sort of you know, everything can still change. According to but, today, but it's yeah. still on. <laughs> exactly. Yes, according to today, it's still on. But um, and and yeah, I'm going to be teaching there. I'm going to be. Uh, I'm going to have a stand there, um, and and hopefully something in the exhibition as well or in the competition as well. So you know, it's. Um, that that would be lovely. I'm really looking looking forward to that. Uh, that would be really nice, um, and um, and hopefully, some other shows will 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 follow after. Mm-hmm. Well, we can keep keep following. You can keep us updated, can't you, with um, notices on your website or your social media yes. or whatever, so that we can exactly, find yeah. out where we are. And I think that's the thing, isn't it? These days is we can plan things, and then it's really a question of right: is it going ahead? Is it going ahead? And then just you know keeping everybody informed in social media what we're doing is is probably yes. the easiest way, isn't it, to find out what's yes, going on? So, yeah, brilliant. Well, I have to say, Vendulka, I've really really enjoyed chatting with you today. It's really been brilliant. You've shared some very honest and very wise points Thank as you. well. Um, <laughs> all hard won, I think, as well. You know. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me it's been it's been really fun you know talking about uh, about my journey and um and sharing what uh what I've done what I've learned it's um it's it's lovely it's been a real pleasure
Oh, it's been an absolute pleasure for me as well. Thank you so much, Sven Dulke. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode and want to hear more, then please join the Stitchery Stories fan club so you can get an email when a new episode is released. It's a quick and easy way of listening and of keeping up with any news and information around this podcast. Please visit stitcherystories.com. Of course, you can listen to Stitchery Stories on plenty of podcast apps at Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify and plenty more besides. You can also ask your smart speaker to play Stitchery Stories podcast too. But wherever you listen, why not leave us a rating and a review to encourage other people to listen to. I very much appreciate you taking the time to do that for me. So that is the end of our Stitchery story for today. Keep stitching, keep smiling and keep creating your very own Stitchery stories.